So he's um, taking the cast off and as he starts like unwrapping the gauze, I start kind of panicking. I notice something and I'm like, oh sh there is something on my leg. <laughs> Hello, my beautiful internet friends. Welcome back. I have a story for you guys today, and the title is not an exaggeration. I really wish it was. I wanted to hop on here and give you guys like a day 12 after amputation kind of update, but I can't do that without telling you a little bit about what's been going on behind the scenes because holy crap. Yeah, something happened and we need to talk about it. Uh, I need to preface this by saying that if you are grossed out by medical things, you probably don't want to watch this video. I will give another warning before I show photos of what actually is happening, what happened. Um, but it's, it's like my dad didn't even want to see photos of it. It's pretty gross. Just forewarning. Yeah, so let's just, let's just dive into it. I think the last bit of footage that you guys saw was my five days in the hospital. I was on my way home. I was so excited to finally be going back home where I could actually get some rest because I was exhausted and I, I have been exhausted. I'm like finally catching up on some sleep so maybe I don't look so tired anymore. Maybe I do though. I got home. I was so happy to be home. I slept like 12 hours that first night I got home. But the next evening, the day after I got home, I got up and I started feeling really, really weird. Like I went to the restroom and I came back and I was like, Brian, I, something doesn't feel right. Like I got super nauseous and dizzy and I was in like more pain and just out of it and just felt just ugh. You know, and he was like, well, let's just take your temperature. And it turned out that I had a fever of over 100, which surprised me because I was like, I'm fine. Like, don't worry about it. I'm totally fine. We don't even need to take my temperature. But he was like, yes, we do. And I'm glad that he insisted on that. Called the on-call line and they were like, go to the ER just to make sure nothing's terribly wrong because you shouldn't have a fever. They admitted me immediately. They ran a whole like emergency sepsis thing on me. It turned out I didn't have sepsis, thank God. That would be horrible. Uh, but after being there for many hours and feeling like absolute poop, they came back and uh, said that I definitely had an infection. I, I had a UTI infection from the catheter that I had in the hospital and it had spread to my kidneys. Um, hence why I was feeling like crap. They dosed me up with antibiotics and they got things under control. So like I wasn't, you know, at risk anymore. I was gonna be okay. But the big question was, should they take the cast off my leg and check and see if anything was going on with my leg? Because they could tell that I had an infection. They thought that they knew where it was coming from but it was entirely possible that maybe something was going on with my leg as well. <laughs> the weird thing is, is that they told us they couldn't recast it. Like they said, we literally can't do casting in the ER, so if we take it off, we're not gonna be able to put on anything but a splint. And that's a real risk because my leg has to stay casted for four weeks because of the specific procedures they did on it in surgery. Brian and I talked it over for a little while and we decided that since there was no like increased pain, there was no weird feelings, there was no like red streaks or anything that we could see at the top of my cast, we were gonna, we were gonna keep the cast on and call it good for the night. So we got home and Brian was like really insistent that I go up to Denver the next day and get the cast off and like talk to my doctors. And I was, I'm gonna be honest, I was like really stubborn and did not wanna go. I was so tired, like could barely put words together, could barely like stay awake, like just beyond exhausted and I just wanted to stay home and rest. And thankfully, Brian thought further than I could and insisted that I go up. I was able to get an appointment with Zach, my prosthetist, who would be able to take my cast off because he was actually the one who put the cast on, though none of the doctors could see me that day. So my mom woke me up and hauled me up to Denver and I was super ticked off about it because I'm like, everything's fine. Like, it's gonna be all right, guys. I was so wrong. So we get to Denver, we get to my prosthetist's office, and he goes to take it off. Here is where, if you are squeamish, if you do not like medical imagery, if you don't like things that are gross, I would recommend skipping the rest of this video because I'm gonna show some photos that 
are disgusting to me, that like gross me out. Ugh. So he's um, taking the cast off and as he starts like unwrapping the gauze, I start kind of panicking. I notice something and I'm like, oh shit, there is something on my leg. And oh dear, there was something on my leg. This is what we found lurking underneath my cast. Why? What the hell? So Zach goes up to grab one of the doctors because thankfully they live in the same building they live. They work in the same building to come down and the doctor said that this was apparently a severe allergic reaction to one of the things that they use in surgery. But it looks like my leg is like being eaten by a flesh-eating disease. And it's funny because the other allergic reaction that I had in the hospital, I joked about that. Hopefully it's not the start of like a skin eating zombie disease that's gonna kill us all. I literally joked about, I hope this isn't like a flesh eating disease or whatever, and it's not, like it's, it's not, but my leg looks like a zombie. Like my leg looks like part of the walking dead. It looks awful. It's super gross. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I was not, I was not pleased. And um, I, I asked him, and this was like the one part of this whole experience that really made me angry because I was freaked out. Like if you saw that on your leg, would you be totally cool, calm and collected? I mean, maybe you would be, but I was not, especially in the state that I'm in. And I, I, I asked him as he was like walking out the room, I was like, are you a hundred percent sure that this is an allergic reaction, that this is not something else? And with a really condescending tone and a lot of arrogance, he was like, do you think I would have told you that that's what it was if it wasn't? and then laugh. That response was really frustrating because this is my leg. Like this is what I have left of my leg and so much has happened with it that if this was like actually a flesh eating disease or something scary or whatever, like this is all I have left of my leg and I need it to be okay. And for his response to just be so demeaning is like unfortunate like I'm scared you know like I'm exhausted from surgery and scared and drugged up and he didn't have the decency to at least be kind to me when my leg looks like it's being eaten by something which was just frustrating and like he came back with cream to put on it and then recasted it so there is a zombie leg underneath that cast right there, right now. And I don't even know what to say about it. It's just so bizarre. And I don't know what's gonna happen with it. Like I'm going back in on Wednesday. That's when they can actually see me and they're gonna take the cast off and look at it again. I really hope that it's better. I really hope that it doesn't scar over. I like, I am sort of in shock that everything has happened that has happened. I was just kind of in shock to see that and I didn't think to ask a lot of questions I probably should have. And so here we are and um, fingers crossed that everything turns out okay. Fingers crossed that it's nothing. I mean, that it, I guess it is just an allergic reaction. Apparently I have a lot more allergies than I've known about before. I think I've developed some because they certainly seem to be getting more severe and I've never had anything like that happen in surgery. But yeah, that's that's the update on my leg. It's a, it's a zombie. My leg is auditioning to be a part of The Walking Dead, I think. <sighs> it's been a insane two weeks. Uh, very, very unexpected. Things have not gone according to plan. I'm finally like stable. I'm on antibiotics for the infection. I am on the medications I need to control the pain that I'm having in my leg. And it has just been a heck of a 12 days. On the upside, I did take a shower yesterday. Check it out guys. Like my hair is not super, super greasy and gross. I'm gonna share, I'm gonna share this with you guys because I trust you. I went nine days without taking a shower because I was so tired and taking a shower with a cast on takes a lot of energy. I feel really bad for Brian or any visitors who came to see me because there's only so much that, that deodorant and body spray can cover up, right guys? So things are stable. I'm looking good now. I will definitely keep you guys updated on what we find on Wednesday when this puppy comes off. And I finally got some sleep the two days after all that happened. I literally like slept all night and slept most of the day. I'm finally feeling a little bit more human. Like I can carry on a conversation for a little while or like I can film a video, but 
that is the story of how my leg is now apparently a little bit, just a little bit of a zombie. Just, it's, it's just part zombie. I'm really hoping that that goes away entirely and that that doesn't scar and, you know, look weird. Cross your fingers. But hey, you know what? If Even if it does and I'm able to walk, then so be it. Uh, end result, I just want to be able to walk. I just want to be able to like move and do stuff and actually have a leg. And if that happens in the end, all of this was worth it. Thank you for sticking around for this journey. Thank you for listening to me talk about all of this. And gosh, having you guys be a part of this is truly amazing like reading your comments is incredible and so helpful to me especially when i'm struggling especially when things feel like they're falling apart and upside down and it just it, it, i feel so supported by you guys and i wanted to say thank you and always thank you so much to all of my patrons over on patreon for all you're doing for me i appreciate you so 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 much Thank you for spending a few minutes watching this video. And um, that's all I got, guys. I'm gonna lay down and probably take another like eight hour nap. Hopefully the next video will just be like a normal, like, hey, here's how things have gone and everything's great. Fingers crossed that that's what it's gonna be. That's what it's gonna be, guys. I'm just speaking it into existence because that works. Anyways, I love you guys. I am thinking of you and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys. Heard from the sky, all the